Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about issues with your Mac overheating and how to solve them. Now we could all relate to this problem whether you have an old Intel Mac or an Apple Silicon one. Overheating is usually caused by a lot of CPU usage or just stress on the internals of our computers. And this could be caused by a whole number of reasons ranging from legitimately having a dirty computer or being a little bit behind on some software updates. So let's start with number one, which is closing out some web browser tabs. For those of us who use Google Chrome for faster web browsing, we we could definitely relate to this because that web browser is very inefficient on Mac operating systems compared to Windows. And if you're like me and you have 10 plus tabs for a variety of reasons, it's kind of like making your computer carry more than one grocery bag, maybe like 30 in one finger, and you're making it go up the stairs. It causes a lot of stress. And if you combine that with a very inefficient web browser like Google Chrome, it can cause a lot of heat. So I definitely need to practice this and close out those web browser tabs that you definitely don't need. I know it seems efficient to have them all open at the same time but we definitely don't need it. Tip number two is all about checking the usage of our CPU, which is the main brain of our computer and the one that's making all the processes happen. So let's open up activity monitor. And on this list, you will see every app that is using a percentage of our CPU. If you see anything that is out of the ordinary or taking up a huge chunk of the processor, go ahead and quit it because it's causing a lot of overheating. Another thing that you could do is to use the popular free tool in Clean My Mac X, which analyzes the CPU performance. There's a quick little toolbar that gives us a lot of information. Normal CPU temperature is anywhere between 45 to 66 degrees Celsius or 113 to 151 Fahrenheit. You can also see how much loaded your CPU is and what programs are taking up how much percentage of that. There is a download link in the description box below and I highly recommend doing that because it makes everything about your Mac just simplified. Tip number three is very similar to the first one and that is to quit unused apps. If you have a lot of applications open at the same time like Google Chrome, Safari, Spotify, maybe Lightroom and some kind of video editor, that's a very CPU you and RAM intensive endeavor and you're going to cause a lot of heat. And just like the first two tips combined, just quit any application that you aren't using. Some of them can be used in tandem and it shouldn't be a problem, but there are some that you may have to compromise in opening one at a time. Tip number four is all about login items and launch agents. And these are programs that open up immediately when you start up your Mac. Again, it seems like a good idea to jumpstart your day with three programs opening at the same time when you power on your Mac. But that is a lot of simultaneous processes that your Mac has to do upon launching itself to life. So to address this problem, let's go to system preferences and click on the search bar and search up login items. Here you can see any of the programs that launch immediately upon startup and you can subtract anything that you don't need. The next thing that we need to address are those launch agents. So let's click on finder, head over to go and click on go to folder. Type in this address and you should be shown a full list of launch agents that you could delete, but this could be a little bit risky because if you delete something that you shouldn't be, you could cause permanent damage to your Mac. So here's where clean my Mac X comes in again. In the optimization tab, there's literally a launch agents function where it lists out a lot of things that you don't need or may need. And then you could go in, click whatever you don't want and quit it all. Clean My Mac X makes all these complicated tasks so easy, so I couldn't recommend it more. Tip number five is all about an issue of the environment in which you're using your Mac or MacBook. I live in sunny Los Angeles and it could get really hot down here during the summer. It was 100 degrees multiple times and I do work outside sometimes. This thing is made of metal. It's going to conduct a lot of heat. And when I'm in direct sunlight and in a hot environment or maybe a hot room, it does slow down my computer because it's just not good for the internal components. So for you, same thing. Try to keep your computer in a cool environment where it can blow cool air into our device and we should be good to go. Try to avoid direct sunlight. That's usually a problem. And on a related note, tip number six is to physically clean your computer. We have fans and they are meant to blow cool air into our device to keep it from overheating. But over time, that collects dust. So if you have a rocket blower or a can of compressed air, go ahead and spray that in and make sure all the dust clumps get blown out. And if you have a microfiber cloth, go ahead and gently wipe down your screen, not with your t-shirt, but with a microfiber cloth and make sure that it doesn't fall into those fans because those vents need to be open clear so that we have cool air keeping our computer from overheating. And the last tip that I have for you today is to update your Mac, whether that's a big one or a small one for a specific application. Companies and developers are always pushing out new software updates for optimization or new features. And if you're behind on those updates, your program is just simply not optimized. And if we're out of date, we are running very inefficiently, which then causes more stress on our internals. So if there's any available update, go ahead, click on that, whether that is for a big Mac OS Ventura update or for a specific one for an application like Spotify. Once you have all these tips taken care of, you should be good to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.